Hey, train man, it's here. Didn't go nowhere. Been really busy with stuff. Um, I'm working on some patterns that I thought would be of interest to the live stream community or anybody in general, but we're going to talk today about use of a follow board, or in some cases they call it a follow block. In this case, it's like a block, but a board or a block is the terminology used. And we're also going to talk about patterns used in a live steam locomotive. Now, the most complicated pattern in live steam is the trailing truck. And that pattern is, you know, full of cores, man. It's the cores all over. All that yellow you see is cores. The silver part is the actual pattern. There's the back. I got. I'm working on it. It's all. Um, Kind of broken, and, and I'll explain to you why. Here's a finished one. Oh boy, damn things are heavy. And you can see in there where it's all cored out. Okay. And uh, wow, I don't know how much that weighs. Probably 40 pounds. And uh, uh, um. And I had to recondition this and get it all straightened out. It's all loose. Now I'm going to put the follow board block up on here. And I'll explain to you how it works. And by the way, here it is. Let me get it up here. I'm tilting up. Now, in here is where those big yellow blocks go. And you might see the impression here. This is the center. And there's the, the, the Y shape or the delta part. And this thing here is so delicate. It goes in there like that. Okay, now, how this works is I'm going to make, a 20, make this to set up for a 24 by 24. That's what the foundry has. I called them. That's what they use. Right, we're going to add to the sides here to make it a little bit better for the flash to fit on there because right here this goes up and then it goes down so I had to have something straight here and um, uh, 24 by 24 flask is like a loose lace not a it's not this isn't what's called a match plate they you're using this as the match but here's a problem you see here if I take a scale here this is about maybe 16th of an inch thick I can put that up underneath there, see, and what happens is when they put the sand in here and they're banging it like this, and they might even use one of them air jobs, boom, 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 banging it and everything, it cracks this front, and that's why this is cracked. Now, probably in the beginning when it was new, it was flat, but it, over the years, it gets moisture, warps, big mass here, this more mass, and um, so what I'm going to do is either try to find a piece of thin plywood to fit under there like a model plywood and trace it out and then nail it to this to make that gap up under the bottom. Okay, and then there's gaps here that the sand falls in. I want to get that a little bit tighter. Of course, we're going to paint it, get it all pattern lacquered up again, new, cleaned, uh, sand it, get it in good shape. Um, all right, so now what happens is they mold this up. Then they got to flip the whole thing, board and everything. They got to clamp this board somehow with clamps to the pattern. Or they can lift the whole thing up and hope that the pattern don't fall out. But they don't want to take a chance on that. So what they're going to do, and I'm going to take this out and reverse it for you to show you. Put this on the floor. That thing is heavy, man. I'm going to put this on this side and then I'm going to attempt to pick this thing up and put it on there and I'll explain to you how this works okay all right that's on there now okay so now let's picture the flask all around here now all you're going to see is a flask this thing okay so now they just picked this up with a couple of guys put handles on this pick it up like that, 
put it on a side, and now you're going to see sand all around in here, all around. And you just see the top half of the pattern. They put the other half of the flask on there, and they mold this side. Then they remove that. Now I want to mention, in here, let me find a bolt, a head bolt, a little while ago. Well, that doesn't matter that much. There's threaded, and I'll show it to you here. Pattern. Right here, 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 right there, and one there. They're threaded for a 5 16 18, and I gotta make a like a, a bar or something up here like this, a handle, and then one over here, and they wrap that thing, and then they have a way to pick that pattern up out of the cope. Oh, I'm sorry, the drag. The drag's on the bottom. This is now going to be the cope. It sounds weird, but that's the way it has to go. They're going to have to put a um, risers over here, riser over here, riser over here, and I don't know where they're going to pour it. Maybe on here, maybe there. I don't know. Whatever they decide. Uh, okay, so now, well, what's those big blocks? Cores. Now this right here is a core box, one half a core box. Let me, let me wait till that compressor stops. All right, back to where we were before we got interrupted by the air compressor. Let's see. Oh, okay, I found a bolt. Bolt goes in there. Bolt goes in there. T-handle here, some kind of a handle here, like a rod or something. And they wrap this thing to loosen it up a little bit, and they either put, use the crane or try to pick it out. Two people carefully pick it out, even. And now... We get into the cores. Now this is here, the cores, core boxes to do the side. That's the one side, that's the inside, and this one is the outside. Okay. Now you say, well, how do you get those locked in? Well, you have this thing here. Make that a core, that thick, that shape, like a T. And in these core boxes, you see the same T shape in there. And how do you get the center done? Well, the center is done by these things. Okay, now. These are going to be, they originally were one, one piece that went like this and you rammed it up and made one core, but it, it's a little difficult to do that. So what has been done is they made a separate cores and then glue them together. Uh, and you can see in this one it has a fin in there, but that don't matter. And you use this and this and it keys it all together. And then they, what they do is they have special core glue and they glue these things together. And they make this big block of core. Now they have to make a left and a right. This one is the same on both sides. This one is, of course, the same on both sides. But the left and the right on the sides, I've got the pattern the core boxes over there. All right, so, and they're also marked. Is that where's core E, core G, core F, and core H. And they're marked accordingly. And now, like I said, they flip this over and they put the core prints in those holes. They drop them in there. Like, uh, let me see. Wait a minute now. I might be wrong about that. Let me see something. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like that. And well, let's see. Let me say this again. Yeah, because you see that's. Oh, that gets done. That gets done by the core. So that's right. It's going to be straight down there. So then the core goes in there and it causes that to go up under there. It's it's in the core. It's hard to explain, but it's up underneath here. And then that whole block goes down in there and it make makes that shape. And it, it's complicated. It's complicated. I know how it works. And then of course these little ones here go on these two ends to that's for where the pins go for the equalizer rods that go out for the equalizing of the 
uh, spring rigging. But anyway, that's how that's done. Now, like I mentioned, this is the most difficult pattern to make and to cast on any live steam locomotive. I don't know about big size, full size, but I'm talking about live steam or inch and a half scale stuff or even bigger or smaller. Smaller would be easier because you don't have to have so fancy. Uh, I've seen it made in three pieces. That's kind of sucks. It's better to do it in one. A little more expensive, but it's worth it. Um, uh, yeah, senior moment. Can't remember. Uh, anyhow, yeah, I was talking about the difficulty. So then the next most difficult pattern to cast and make would be the cylinders. The cylinders are a big chunk, probably a maybe close to 100 pound casting there. This one's probably 40, 50 because it's all cored. But this is the most difficult to make pattern wise and casting wise, molding. Cylinder block is a big chunk to put all the cores in there. Not too bad. And the third one uh, would be the cradle. And that's the piece that goes down across here on the back end of the frame extension, some people call it, but it's called the cradle. And those patterns or those castings are the biggest and the most difficult to make. Number one would be this, number two would be the cylinders, and number three would be the uh, cradle, and they are the largest castings on any live steam locomotive. Now, if you want to talk about the tenders, now you got tender side frame, six wheel commonwealths, and complicated there, but usually we make those, I mean, I could, I've made them in one piece, and um, they're complicated and also expensive to make. Now you're thinking, you know, pieces about that big. Um, you can make them in side frame, bolt them together with strategically placed bolts where you can't see them, and it worked just as fine. Uh, you could do that with this, but this, you know, swings back and forth under the engine. It supports a lot of the locomotive weight. The whole uh, firebox is up here on top of this, right about the weight is distributed right here, and then the back of this carries some of the weight with what they call heart rockers. And, of course, there's the wheels that go in here. Um, but, anyway, that's what's uh, primarily this video was to explain what a follow board is. And that's the follow board there on the floor. And um, uh, I think it's an interesting casting. I always wanted to work on one or make one. I know how they're made. I never made one from completely scratch. But this one here is the next best thing I'm working on. And I'm cleaning it up and getting it all fixed up. And and uh, recondition and bring back the edges they're all shot out you know I gotta build up some of these sharp edges here they're really bad here here and here I gotta put uh, wood in there saw cut that out put a piece of wood and then bring it back you can't just put bondo on a bondo will crack off it won't stick I bondo this up but I also put wood under it and um, that's about it for the for this uh, video Hope you enjoyed it and understand now a little bit what's called, if somebody mentions a follow block, and nobody's ever, I, that I know of, ever made a video about follow blocks. So um, that's it for now. Uh, steaming away, still making uh, ca uh, parts, castings. We're going to be doing some casting. It's the middle of summer now. It's July something right now. It's pretty hot out. You might even see the sweat on my face. Uh, but anyhow, thanks for watching all my videos. Please subscribe, and we'll see you again on the next video.